Okay. Uh, so um, we just finished with the derivation of uh, closed coiled spring and uh, open coiled springs. And I just gave you a sample problem also just to demonstrate the formula you know, for an open coil spring. Maybe uh, I will uh, just have uh, uh, a look at an open coil spring problem, sample problem on open coil spring also. And then uh, we will uh, move to uh, buffer spring derivations and uh, theory, etc. So let us have a, a look at this problem also, uh, so that you have a feel of uh, the quantities uh, used in this area. Uh, I'll just read the problem. An open coil helical spring made out of uh, a 10 mm diameter steel rod has 10 complete coils, each of mean diameter of 80 mm and the angle of helix being 15 degree. Calculate the deflection under an axial load of 250 Newton and the shear stress due to the torsional moment and shear force. Take G is equal to 0.85 Newton to the power 5 Newton per millimeter square and E is equal to 2.1 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per millimeter square. So if you are given a question like this, now let us see what is the data given. Now you are given that the spring is 10 mm diameter, so small d is equal to 10 mm. It has 10 complete coils, so n is equal to 10. Each of mean diameter, so capital D is equal to 80 mm, so r is equal to 40 mm. And the angle of helix alpha, alpha is 15 degree. And you are asked to find the deflection under the axial load, so w is 250 Newton. So you are asked to find deflection and the shear stress. It is uh, uh, shear stress due to both uh, torsional moment T and also due to the uh, uh, shear force. Okay, again, this is actually a direct problem. So you are asked to find the deflection first. So you can directly apply the formula uh, for an open coil spring. So in the case of uh, an open coil spring, I think this is the formula which is there in most of your lab record, etc. And you have used this formula uh, to find the deflection delta of an open coil spring. So you can apply this directly and it is difficult to put it in your memory. But if you are been using many times, it will be, uh, you get it fast. 64 WR cube N C alpha by D to the power 4, cos square alpha by G plus 2 sin square alpha by D. But for the lab exam, etc., for students, they're supposed to know this. Otherwise, they won't be able to solve for this uh, G. Uh, so here in this problem, uh, what is asked is actually delta. So it's simply direct substitution of W, uh, W is 250, then R is 40, N number of turns 10, C alpha, alpha is 15, uh, and then D is the diameter of the coil, 10 mm, and G and D is directly given to you. So solving this, you will be getting delta, which is equal to 12.4 mm. And then you are asked to find the shear stress, shear stress due to uh, the torsion and also due to the direct shear and uh, for due to torsion 16 t by pi d cube this i asked you to uh, uh, learn and this also w by a so again t is but t you have to find by using the formula wr okay w is given r is given so you have to find t and then you have to find tau t using this formula and you will get it as 50.92 newton per millimeter square due to uh, the torsion and due to the direct stress uh, shear due to the shear it is uh, w by a and it is only 3.183 so the total will be 53 so you can see that uh, when you compare this to this is negligible if you want uh, you can neglect that okay so uh, these are just uh, two sample problems uh, so that you will uh, get a feeling of how the questions are coming to you and that too it was direct questions only okay now <clears throat> Now, the last portion here in uh, this talk is actually buffer springs. As I have told you in the beginning, uh, the springs have a lot of applications. It is basically used to store the energy, to dissipate the energy, uh, uh, to etc. Many, many applications are there, out of which one of the application is to, uh, I mean, take the impact or take the shock uh, and make sure that uh, the bodies are uh, uh, softened or 
put in uh, in the position in a very softened manner or cushioned okay so one of the application of the buffer spring is in railways uh, especially uh, when railway wagons uh, they'll be coming uh, with a velocity and they'll be having a weight and be coming with a velocity and they'll be having kinetic energy and this kinetic energy has to be absorbed and uh, put into by the springs so we use buffer springs mostly in railways and we use this in elevators and many other applications also so here you can see the shock between two colliding bodies is softened or cushioned by means of these buffers and the purpose of the buffers is uh, either to increase the duration of impact by allowing considerable local deformation of the colliding bodies and thus to reduce the magnitude of the force which acts between the bodies your impact that is actually it will be absorbing this energy kinetic energy and if possible to try to dissipate that and it is used in elevators also again the same purpose only uh, it is used in elevators to cushion the elevator and also uh, to cushion the counterweight that is used in the elevator and uh, you can see these springs in the elevator pit so if you uh, have been to any elevator uh, maybe you can uh, just look down and see the springs there. Uh, so these are nothing but buffer springs. And uh, uh, the this is basically used to absorb the uh, kinetic energy of the car that is containing the or the cabin which contains the passengers. And also uh, it will be used to uh, counter absorb the energy, kinetic energy of the counterweight of the uh, which is applied. I mean, it's just a part of the elevator. So basically it is used to absorb uh, the energy or dissipate the energy by which it is coming. Now, uh, this is just uh, uh, an illustration of uh, uh, the spring. So this is how uh, the spring will be looking like. It will be fixed onto some plate and then to some conical blocks if, if needed. And uh, uh, this is how it looked like. So this I have taken from uh, the India Mart from where we can actually buy these springs. And uh, this is actually uh, helical springs. You can see that uh, this spring is the cross section, circular cross section, and it's a helical spring here, used here. And uh, this is the full uh, diagram uh, of uh, this elevator and how it is functioning. You can see there's a pulley here and there's a cabin. You can see the counterweight, and you can see counterweight for the buffer only if you uh, see see carefully then only you'll be able to see this and you can have uh, you can see the uh, buffer for the car car means this this will come down and uh, with some velocity and it will be resting on this so you have a car buffer here and you can see the counterweight which will be coming here which is passing through the pulley through the rope you can see a counterweight and uh, for the counterweight also that one buffer is provided okay so uh, this is the one of the application of the buffer spring in the elevator similarly it is used in uh, railways also so just to demonstrate i have shown it here so that you will understand okay now in buffer springs yeah, you will be many times you will be asked to design a buffer spring instead of an analysis you will be asked to find uh, say how many number of uh, turns are required or so what is the minimum diameter of the coil that is required or what is the uh, length of the coil etc uh, so that provided it has to uh, absorb this much amount of energy Okay, so such kind of uh, situations also may arise where we have to design a buffer spring. So uh, in the case of buffer spring, uh, what are the quantities that you should know? So you should know what is the uh, mass of the wagon uh, or, or the weight of the wagon or the weight of the cabin uh, with which it is uh, uh, the spring is impacted or uh, um, it is coming uh, and hitting the spring and you should know the velocity of the wagon then only you can understand what is the energy kinetic energy with which it is uh, impacting the spring and then uh, you should know what is the maximum deflection of the spring so uh, sometimes the energy is very high uh, this uh, yeah, the spring has to deflect more to take or absorb that energy so if the spring uh, maximum deflection that can be uh, allowed in a spring is uh, less than what is needed then again we cannot use it so in the design 
of spring v all this matters so maximum deflection of the spring then diameter of the spring and then the allowable shear stress in the spring material so all these are the design parameters which will be given to you and you will be asked to design the spring you will be asked to determine the diameter d of the spring wire and sometimes you will be asked to uh, find the number of turns uh, n also uh, now here in this uh, uh, design uh, you can see that uh, the weight of the car or weight of the wagon will be w and actually it is uh, coming with uh, uh, some uh, force or it is having some energy or sometimes uh, weight can be dropped also um, from the height uh, so um, uh, we have to find out the deflection of the spring uh, when a weight or a force is applied gradually to the spring okay that we call it as w equivalent uh, so this w equivalent can be obtained only by uh, equating the kinetic energy uh, of, with which the wagon is coming uh, to the energy that is stored in the spring okay uh, so kinetic energy you will get from the equation half mv square which we already know uh, where m is the mass of the wagon or uh, if w is the weight of the wagon w by g will give you the mass uh, and then what is the strain energy stored in the spring it is half w delta and that w we put it as w equivalent which is the equivalent load which when applied gradually produces a deflection delta okay uh, so many times you may have to find this equivalent load and then proceed to find the uh, parameters like small d uh, diameter that is required number of turns required etc is very important then and uh, the torque transmitted by the spring uh, that we know t is equal to wr but here please note that this is w equivalent into r it's not the weight of the wagon the torque will be equal to w equivalent into r, r where w equivalent is the equivalent weight uh, uh, that is corresponding to uh, what yeah, which is applied when uh, when uh, the load is applied gradually what is the w that you have to find and then that is the quantity that you have to use in the design and the uh, torque transmitted uh, by the uh, spring uh, t you can find it in terms of uh, shear stress also uh, this also you need uh, in the design because uh, uh, we know that uh, we know tau in terms of uh, uh, t etc but here in a different manner so this is uh, actually what we have already learned but we are putting it in a different different manner that's so why using your fundamental formula that is a pure torsion formula t is equal to we know t by j is equal to tau by r okay so t is equal to tau t into j by r where tau t is the shear stress due to the torque and j is the shear, shear the um, uh, uh, what is it two uh, i uh, the second model is polar moment of area so it is pi d to the power 4 by 32 and r is d by 2 okay and uh, many times what you will be given will be the allowable shear stress shear stress that can be allowed in a uh, spring and uh, you, may ask, you will be asked to design so uh, you can substitute for tau t uh, to tau allowable and then uh, you can uh, use this equation and you can uh, modify this you can simplify this uh, this d and this d can be removed one of the d can be removed and finally you will be getting this equation t is equal to pi into tau allowable dq by 16. Okay. so allowable uh, uh, okay so you can find out what is the maximum torque that can be taken by the spring uh, provided you know the allowable shear stress in the spring okay so that also you should know uh, then uh, you should know sometimes you will be asked what is the free length of the buffer spring uh, so that uh, the manufacturer uh, can uh, produce it and also you may be uh, asked to find the pitch of the coil also so these are the ways you find the free length so the free length of the buffer spring is equal to the solid length plus maximum compression uh, plus clearance between the adjacent coils so this is how you find the free length of the buffer spring and what is the free length i have already explained in the previous session and solid length is actually ls solid length is ls uh, which is equal to nd this formula i have already discussed which is n is the number of turns and d is the diameter of the coil and uh, 
delta max is a maximum compression of the spring and point and clearance between the edges and coils uh, you can uh, take it approximately 15 percent of delta max that is 0.15 delta max and pitch of the coil p is equal to uh, free length by n minus n this is the usual way we find the pitch of this uh, coil where n is a number of times so uh, these are the things which you should know when you define uh, the, uh, I mean, when you design a buffer, buffer spring. So nothing much uh, detailed. The only thing is that uh, uh, you should understand that the kinetic energy should be taken. How the kinetic energy is absorbed by the spring. Okay? And some of the references I have uh, just listed here, and these are only some very few references. There are lots of textbooks on this type of materials. You can refer any of it. And next, we will move to a sample problem in buffer spring so that you will understand it better. So let us uh, just have a, a look at the problem. A rail wagon of mass 20 tons is moving with a velocity of 2 meter per second. It is brought to rest by two buffers, uh, buffer springs of diameter 300 mm. So please note that here you have two buffer springs. Uh, so each energy will be shared between the two buffer springs. And the maximum deflection of the spring is 250 mm. The allowable shear stress in the spring material is 600 megapascal. Design the buffer spring. Take G is equal to 0.84 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per millimeter square. So this is a question where you are asked to design the buffer uh, spring. So design means you have to find the diameter. You have to find the uh, diameter of the uh, wire, uh, the radius. Uh, I think radius is also not given. So we have to find all these quantities, number of terms, etc. So with the data given to you, okay? So let us see what is the data given to you. Please read the question carefully. Uh, its mass is given, so 20 tons, and one ton is how much, how many kilograms? It's 1,000 kg. So it is 20 into 1,000 uh, uh, kilograms. Uh, so from here, uh, you can find the kinetic energy. Velocity is 2 meter per second. So the kinetic energy is uh, half mv square. Uh, so you can find the kinetic energy with which the wagon is approaching the spring. And uh, the maximum deflection is also given to you, so 250 mm. So uh, you can use the equation half mv square is equal to a half uh, w delta, uh, where w is equivalent load and delta is 250 mm. So from that equation, you can find the equivalent load, w equivalent. And uh, after finding w equivalent, then you can use the remaining data uh, to find the remaining parameters, say the diameter of the wire, r, etc. So let us see what we have done. So kinetic energy of the wagon. Uh, it is half mv square. Uh, so mass is uh, uh, how much? Uh, 20 tons. So 20,000 kg uh, into velocity. Uh, it is in meter per second, two square. So it is uh, 40,000 kilogram meter square per second square. Uh, and this we can put it as newton kilogram meter per second square. It is newton. So 40,000 newton meter. Or I told you that in the case of spring power problems, better that you convert all the units to Newton and mm so that you will get the numbers uh, so in such a manner that you can handle. Uh, so uh, this is 40 into 10 to the power 3 Newton meter. And if I convert it into Newton mm, it is 40 into 10 to the power 3 into 10 to the power 3. So 40 into 10 to the power 6 Newton mm. Okay, and I told you that using this equation, uh, that is, this is nothing but uh, half uh, W equivalent into delta max. This is the energy that has to be stored by the spring. Please note that you have two springs. So uh, the energy will be stored by the two springs. Okay, two into half W equivalent into delta max should be equal to the kinetic energy that of the wagon, which is 40 to 10 to the power 6. So solving this, you will be able to find the equivalent W, which is equal to uh, 1,60,000 Newton. Now, after getting W equivalent, now uh, you can uh, use uh, uh, this W equivalent to find the diameter of the wire. And you have to use this expression, shear stress tau, tau is equal to 16 T by pi dq. Uh, usually it will be close coiled spring, so you can use this formula. 
60t by pi d cube and t is equal to w equivalent e to r please be careful uh, as many a times you have a tendency to put the weight of the wagon here it's not the weight of the wagon it is equivalent uh, force with the, which the spring will deflect so as to absorb the energy so you have to use w equivalent and uh, you can find the t the torque here and substitute this torque in the formula and uh, you will get uh, in this expression for tau t and tau t is the shear stress and you are given the allowable shear stress or the maximum shear stress it can the spring uh, or the material can take so that you have to substitute so tau t can be replaced by tau allowable or the allowable shear stress and then the only unknown quantity will be the diameter of the wire and in solving this you will be able to solve the diameter of the wire so as simple as that and uh, you can find uh, that d is 58.84 mm and in actual practice you may be not be able to get exactly 58.84 in, uh, in in actual practice, you have to round it off and give like say 60 mm, etc., so that the manufacturer can uh, prepare or make it. Uh, now uh, we found the diameter of the wire. Now we need the radius also, the mean radius of the coil or the mean diameter of the coil uh, that is also needed. Uh, the, para the parameter is also needed and that you will get from here delta is equal to so the expression for delta is 64 wr cube n by g d to the power 4 and here the delta is already given to you uh, w is actually the w equivalent d we have already found and r and n we don't know right so how will you find it uh, sorry uh, wait The 600 megapascal. It's 150. Okay. I have in, yeah, R is actually given to R is 150 mm. I think I forgot to give it in the data here. No, okay. Our uh, diameter is already given. So D capital D is 300 mm. So capital R is 150. So it is already given. So you don't need to worry. So here R is also given. Okay. So delta is equal to 64 WR cube n by G D to the power 4. So R is given 150 mm. Actually, R is not directly given to you. What is given is actually D. The mean diameter is given. You have to find the R from there. And then uh, uh, W is actually W equivalent. Delta is also given, G and G is already given and D we just found. So the unknown quantity is N and you can solve for that. So N is equal to just to rewrite the formula. So the quantities between uh, delta uh, G, uh, delta 250 is 0.84 into 10 to the power 5. Uh, diameter, uh, we are using the same theoretical value that uh, we have obtained here uh, just to find N. And then 64 W equivalent we have already found R is this. So you get 7.24. So again, the number of turns cannot be a fraction. So you can approximate it to 8. So you just uh, say provide a buffer spring of wire diameter D is equal to 60 mm with number of turns 8. And in addition to the diameter and the number of turns, you have to give the free length of the buffer spring and also the pitch of the coil free length of the buffer spring you can use a formula that i had already given you that is the solid length nd plus the maximum deflection plus 15 percent of the delta max for clearance you have to give so uh, n is 8 d is the diameter of the coil uh, so here i have taken 60 mm because i got we got small ds 58.84 we approximated it already to 60 so we have have used 60 here 8 into 60 plus delta max 250 plus 0.15 delta max so the free length of the buffer spring minimum should be 767.5 mm and the pitch of the coil uh, the formula is free length by n minus 1 so once you have found the free length then that divided by the number of turns minus 1 so n is 8 8 minus 1 so you get the pitch also okay so we learned how to design a buffer spring also uh, that was a very simple problem. Now, uh, so this is actually uh, uh, what I was supposed to take.
and in addition if we want uh, uh, additional derivations i told you that uh, the axial load is not the only load that can be applied to a spring uh, it can we can apply a torque also axial torque also can be applied to the spring and then if you are asked to find delta uh, or if you are asked to find the angle of twist you know, then again you have to learn or derive it you should understand what exactly happens and then you have to derive it okay so should i do some problems on uh, a close coil spring or else should i go to the theory Anybody uh, want to do the problem along with me? We can move on to next one, ma. Should I do problems or should I do go for the derivation? Derivation, ma'am. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So I will complete with the derivations of the other uh, cases also, and then after that uh, we'll do some problems. I hope some of you will do along with me if you have the calculator, uh, so that uh, you'll have a feel of it. Uh, okay. So I will go to the derivations then. So again, let us go back to closed coiled helical springs and open coiled helical springs again. Uh, so in the earlier session, uh, the load applied was actually the axial load. Okay, so you can see the W given here, and then we learn how to find theta, delta, you know, stiffness, the strain energy, etc. Now suppose if this closed coiled helical spring is subjected to an axial torque like this, okay. So then uh, how to find out uh, these quantities? Now, before going to the derivation, you should understand what will happen when a torque is applied, when an axial torque is applied to the spring. Now, let us consider the closed coil helical spring first. Now, when you can see that when a torque is applied here, uh, either the spring will wind up or else it will become loose. Okay, it will unwind or it will wind up. Okay, uh, so uh, let us consider one of the case when a torque is applied, uh, let the spring, let it be winding up. Okay, so when it winds up, what will happen to the curvature? What will happen to the curvature uh, of each of uh, these uh, portion of the coil of the spring uh, when it is winding up? When it is winding up, the curvature will increase and the radius will decrease. Okay, but when it is unwinding, uh, then what will happen? The curvature will decrease and radius will increase. Okay, so let us consider one of the case uh, when uh, the torque is applied in such a manner that uh, the spring is uh, winding up. It's not unwinding, it is winding up. Okay, so as a result, what will happen? The curvature will increase and the radius will decrease. And what happens to the number of turns? the number of turns again will increase. So, uh, uh, but the total length remains the same. So let us put R and R dash, uh, where R is the original uh, radius uh, of the spring and let R dash be the uh, radius when uh, after the application of the torque. And let us consider N and N dash also, where N is the uh, number original uh, number of turns and let N dash be the number of turns uh, after the application of the torque, okay. Uh, so, and again, what will happen uh, to the spring uh, when it is subjected to a torque? Okay, uh, so what happens is that when a torque is applied, uh, it will cause bending moment in the spring, not the 
torsion. So if you consider a coil, a cross section of the coil, just I have uh, 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 shown earlier, if I take a small cross section, if I take one limb, if I take one limb, uh, and actually this is not closed coil actually, this is open coil uh, in the figure. Actually, I should have taken a closed coil because uh, this uh, plane is not exactly horizontal. Uh, when you apply a torque here, when I consider uh, a, a cross section of the wire here for equilibrium, definitely there should be a moment in the opposite direction. Okay, and uh, that moment in the opposite direction uh, should be there, and that will be about which axis I have taken uh, U axis as the horizontal and V axis as the vertical. So that uh, moment will be acting about the V axis now. Okay, we, uh, that is about uh, about the vertical axis. And it will be having a direction opposite. The sense will be opposite, so that it is in equilibrium. Okay. So, uh, and please note that that will not cause the twisting of the coil. So, if I don't consider the diameter of the coil or a cross section of the individual coil, it will not. It's not going to twist, but uh, this uh, this limb will bend. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, maybe if I go to the open coil, maybe I can see. So in the case of open coil, yeah, yeah. this is actually the figure of the open coil. Here actually, uh, you don't have, the, when you apply a torque here, uh, this torque has to be uh, equilibrated by the uh, internal moment. And that moment will be about the V axis. And this V axis will produce a bending moment in the uh, in the limb here. Actually, this is for open coil, but in the case of closed coil, uh, this U and V will be coinciding with the X and Y. So you don't have uh, torsion, you have only bending moment. Okay, But in the case of open coil, you will be having this uh, torque will be producing bending, I mean, uh, torque also. Uh, I mean, this uh, cross section of the coil will twist. Okay, so I just don't want to confuse uh, the derivation. Uh, that is why I had put it aside and uh, taken it later. So let us see this case. So when uh, an axial twist or an axial couple uh, is applied to the coil, it will try to uh, either unwind or wind up. And let us consider the case where it is winding up. And when a torque is applied, when a torque is applied, uh, it will produce or it will uh, uh, produce a bending moment or this coil, each limb of the coil will be subjected to a bending moment M, which is equal to the torque T applied. Okay. And uh, this bending moment can be obtained by using this formula. This is a fundamental formula, which everyone know. M is equal to EI into D square y by uh, DX square. Uh, that d square by d square and here actually we have to take the change in curvature change in curvature so here m is equal to ei into 1 by r dash minus 1 by r 1 by r dash uh, is the uh, final curvature and 1 by r is the initial curvature and final curvature here will be more because it is winding up the spring now where r is the original radius of curvature and r dash is a new radius of curvature and please note that r dash will be less than r when it is winding up now again here this uh, theory also has assumptions so let us assume uh, that coils have considerable initial curvature so that it behaves like a beam of initial zero curvature. So you have to uh, consider or imagine a beam uh, which is having, which is straight beam. So when the beam is straight, it is having zero curvature. So like that, we assume that the coils are also straight so that it is having zero curvature. And when the torque is applied, it is bending, okay? Just like a beam bend. And please note that here, the bending will be about the vertical axis, about the vertical axis. So if it was a beam, it will bend in the horizontal plane, okay? So the sense of the axial T, T applied be such that it increase the curvature one by R, that is it will wind up the spring. And so as a result, the radius of curvature R decrease and the number of coil N increase. Okay, and let N be the original number of coils and N dash be the resulting number of coils after the application of the axial torque. And uh, we can see that the total length of the coil is a constant. It's not going to change. And we know L is equal to 2 pi Rn for a closed coil spring. And it will be the same uh, after the application of the load torque also. So if R dash and N dash is the radius and number after the application, then L will be 2 pi into R dash N dash. And it should be equal. 
and we will get an expression for 1 by r and 1 by r dash from this expression. So 1 by r will be, this r will move here. So 1 by r is equal to 2 by n by l and 1 by r dash will be 2 by n dash by l. And we got an expression for 1 by r and 1 by r dash. And we can substitute in your earlier expression for m, which is equal to ei into 1 by r dash minus 1 by r. So this I have just uh, put it here again. And I have substituted for 1 by r dash and 1 by r. And uh, here I can see that 2 pi by l is common. So that is taken outside 2 pi by l. So ei into 2 pi by l into n dash minus n. So we got an expression for a moment here, where m is the bending moment that we, to which this coil is subjected to when an axial torque is applied to the closed coil spring. And what is uh, n dash minus n is actually the increase in the number of turns. And n dash is the final number of turns, n is the original number of turns. And uh, uh, if we put so this is nothing but m and if we push this l and ei to the side we will get ml by ei right ml by ei is equal to we will get it as 2 pi into n dash minus n and what is ml by ei that is nothing but the uh, theta x that is the uh, angle by which it has uh, rotated about the uh, x axis that is uh, the bending or the slope okay so, uh, so here onwards, instead of theta x, I'll be using the symbol phi because in most of the textbooks, they use the symbol phi uh, uh, for this theta x. So I have used theta x so that uh, you can uh, understand it is not the angle of twist. Please note that it is not the angle of twist. Just to differentiate that, I have put this uh, subscript x. So you should understand what is this quantity. So this is not the angle of uh, twist. Actually, this will produce a twist at the free end due to this uh, bending of the coil. And uh, that is what I have put it as phi. So from here onwards, it would, instead of theta is, let me put uh, or use a symbol phi. Now the change in curvature or the angle of n per unit length, uh, change in curvature is 1 by r dash minus 1 by r. And that is nothing but d phi by dl. Change in curvature is the uh, uh, angle of bend per unit length that is d phi by dl and that can be obtained as m by ei so please note that uh, m ml by ei actually phi is actually ml by ei to differentiate it with respect to l it will be m by ei and that is 1 by r dash minus 1 by r okay so we are getting an expression for the twist i mean it's not the twist it is actually the total twist at the free end Okay, and uh, you will uh, get it as P is equal to. Now, for, for getting for a circular uh, section, uh, P is equal to, so uh, you can use this formula. So this is a fundamental formula, we know, P is equal to ML by EI. And for a circular section, I is equal to pi d to the power 4 by 64. And you can substitute here, and then substitute for L here, L is equal to 2 pi Rn. And finally, uh, you will get the, um, this P is equal to 128 MRN by e d to the power 4 radians. So suppose if you have uh, uh, given a question, or you are asked to solve the problem and asked to find the phi, uh, sometimes you may have to use this formula uh, to solve that. And then the strain energy stored in the spring, again, the fundamental formula, half m into this, uh, this is a bending moment and phi is a uh, rotation due to the bending moment. And please note that this is due to the bending moment, the stress developed will be the bending stress. So that is why I have used sigma here. And it is sigma square by 8e into the volume, this I have already derived. Uh, so it's a very general formula which can be applied for any situation. So I'm, uh, this can be used for springs also. So if you are asked uh, to find the strain energy uh, and uh, if the stress uh, is, uh, you, I mean, using stress, this is the formula. Okay. And how will you find the stress? Suppose if you know the bending moment, that you can find from the fundamental formula, pure bending formula. That is uh, sigma m is equal to sigma z or sigma is equal to m by z. So the same formula you can use. And so to just to demonstrate, I had put a sample problem here you know, on closed coil helical spring, uh, which is subjected to a torque. Okay. So we'll just uh, read the question. 
A closely coiled helical spring is made of tenemum diameter steel rod. The coil is having 10 complete turns and a mean diameter of 80 mm. Calculate the bending stress induced in the section and the increase in number of turns if it is subjected to an axial thrust of 10 newton meter actually should have an axial couple not axial thrust sorry for that also find the torsional stiffness of the spring take e is equal to 2.1 into 10 to the power 5 newton per millimeter square so if you are given a question like this you are asked to find the bending stress uh, then you are asked to find the increase in the number of turns that is n dash minus n uh, or else uh, you can find n dash that is the final number of turns uh, and then you are asked to find uh, the torsional stiffness also. Now, how would you find the torsional stiffness? It is the, uh, uh, I mean, the torque T by theta. Okay, so uh, let us see what is the data given here. Uh, the diameter 10 mm, small d is 10 mm. Uh, number of turns n is equal to 10. The capital D is 80 and R is 40. Uh, so uh, the couple that is given to you, capital T is 10 newton meter. So from here, how to find all these quantities? So let us uh, start one by one. So let us start with bending stress. How will you find the bending stress sigma? Sigma is equal to? Sigma is equal to m by z, the most fundamental formula, m by where z is a section modulus, uh, which is equal to i by y. i is the second moment of area. y is actually the distance of the fiber from the neural axis. Let us take the extreme fiber. The extreme fiber will be at a distance of uh, d by 2, small d by 2 from the neural axis at the center, which is passing through the center. Here, m is given as 10 newton meter. Uh, so I told you, please convert all these into newton and m. So this will be 10,000 Newton mm, uh, I pi d to the power 4 by 64 for a circular section of diameter small d, d is given to you, y is actually d by 2, that also we got, z is the section modulus i by y, uh, so you can find it as uh, 98.17 and just substitute in this equation, you will get the bending stress. Sigma is equal to m by z. The only thing is that the equations are simple, but you should understand the uh, behavior, how the coil behaves when it is subjected to the top that's all so sigma is equal to 101.85 newton per millimeter square so we just found the stress one of the quantity that is asked now the second quantity that is asked is uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, the uh, increase the number of turns right or the increase in the number of turns uh, the increase in the number of turns is given by the formula phi by 2 pi. So if you want to find n dash minus n, n is given to you this 10. So if you want to find n dash minus n or n dash, we have to find this uh, phi or theta x. And phi is nothing but ml by ei. Uh, m is nothing but the t that is that we are applying, which is 10,000 newton mm. And l is actually 2 pi n r. 2 pi n r for the closed coil spring. r is given, n is 10. e is given to you, i we have already found. So we got phi as, we get phi as 0.2438 radians. Actually, you can do it using your calculator later and then uh, once you get the fee uh, then you can find out the increase in the number of turns like this and the number n dash the final n dash will be uh, 10.0388 so you can see that uh, the quantity the increase is very small uh, in very less uh, number and then the last quantity that is asked is the uh, torsional stiffness of the spring okay so the spring is subjected to uh, torque so it is m by phi so torsional stiffness is uh, m by phi where moment applied is actually 10,000 newton mm and phi we just found it out now so you will get the torsional stiffness 41 newton meter per you can convert it into newton meter per radian so that it is a value which you, which you can work with okay so this is just a demonstration of a closed coil helical spring subjected to an axial uh, torque. Okay. Now let us consider again open coil helical spring when it is subjected to a uh, torque. Okay. Now the same figure I have put here. So let us consider an open coil helical spring subjected to an axial twist. Uh, or an axial couple. So here again, 
uh, I have uh, uh, put the torque in such a manner that it is uh, winding up the coil. Okay, so the coil is winding up uh, so that the curvature is increasing and uh, uh, the radius is decreasing. Okay, and here you can see uh, you have uh, alpha is the uh, angle of helix, and what will happen? Uh, to the spring when it is subjected to an axial torque. Please note that when you consider a small uh, cross section of the wire, a small limb here, uh, then uh, for equilibrium, this torque has to be equilibrated by a moment, by uh, another uh, moment which will be acting in the opposite direction about the same vertical axis. So this torque will be taken care of by the moment uh, by uh, by a moment acting about the vertical axis this actual t is about this vertical axis this moment is also about the vertical axis okay uh, and this will be producing both moment and torsion uh, in this limb so here you can see this is a moment uh, which will be acting on this uh, wire uh, about the v-axis and we can resolve this moment along the y-axis and along the x-axis. Please note that y-axis is actually the axis normal to the cross-section of the coil and uh, the component of M uh, along the y-axis will produce torsion or it will twist this coil and the component of M along the x-axis will bend this coil. Okay, and how can you resolve this M? So this angle is alpha. So definitely the uh, component of M along the x-axis is M cos alpha. And the component of M along the y-axis, it will be M sin alpha. Okay, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, this will be subjected to both torsional moment and bending moment. And since I have already used M for uh, this moment here about the v-axis, bending moment about the x-axis, I am putting it as Bm. Okay, BM is the bending moment about the x-axis. Okay, now uh, don't get confused. In the case of open coil uh, helical spring subjected to an axial load W, uh, W uh, that torque was about the u-axis, and we resolve the moment about the u-axis along the x and y-axis. Now here the moment is about the v-axis, and we are resolving the moment about the v-axis along the x and y. Okay, earlier the torque was WR cos alpha. Now here you can see it is M sin alpha. Okay, and here it is M cos alpha. So this is just for your understanding. So the axial couple T exerts a moment M about the VB axis and we can resolve it into two components, T, the torsional moment and BM, the bending moment about the uh, YY axis and about the XX axis. And now uh, we are supposed to find uh, the phi, uh, the uh, the angle by which uh, it will the uh, it will rotate uh, due to the application of the moment m, and that can be obtained using the energy method, or we can equate the work done to the strain energy stored. So the work done is actually due to the moment torque T, which is equal to the M here. So half M into phi is the work done, and that is equal to the strain energy stored. The strain energy is stored in the form of bending stress and the torsional st shear stress due to torsion, or due to torsion and bending moment. And uh, this is M square L by 2 EI, and strain energy due to torsion is T square L by 2 GJ. And here I just substituted for bending moment, bending moment, uh, here is m cos alpha and torsion is m sin alpha and just substitute here you will get m square cos square alpha l by 2 e l plus m square sin square alpha by 2 g j into l and m is common outside m and l uh, uh, is common outside here you have m on both sides of the equation so one of them will get cancelled and you have half also on both sides so half m will get cancelled on both sides and uh, you will be left with M and L. So ML T is equal to, so phi will be equal to ML cos square alpha by 2 uh, by EI plus sin square alpha by GJ. So this is the fundamental uh, expression for phi uh, for this particular case. Okay, uh, so this is a theory behind uh, open coil helical spring and how to find the uh, angle of twist or at the free end. Or theta x. Now, suppose we are asked to find delta. Suppose if you are asked to find delta, uh, which is another important quantity that you may have to find. 
Uh, so how to find delta again you have to go back to your earlier theorem that is delta is equal to r theta but here you have to uh, find uh, the component of theta uh, uh, due to uh, both i mean uh, theta there will be a rotation about the x-axis and also about the y-axis and you have to resolve this theta uh, actually here, let us go back Delta is equal to the axial extension caused by M can be formed by resolving the rotation. So let us go back to our figure. So, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. so theta, please note that theta will be about the y-axis and theta will also be about the x-axis. Theta x will be due to the M cos alpha and theta y will be due to the uh, M sin alpha. And this theta, you have to find the theta, uh, the resolve this theta. Uh, about uh, the u axis okay uh, that will be uh, causing uh, the, uh, the r into that angle of twist okay so the component of uh, theta uh, theta y about the u axis it will be theta cos alpha and this will be theta sin I mean, theta x into sin alpha that is what i have written here so theta x sin alpha is a component about uh, the u axis and theta y cos alpha is a component about the u axis uh, I mean, uh, you have to resolve the rotation uh, and find out the component about the u-axis due to both the uh, theta y and theta x, and then uh, change and changing curvature. You have to change in uh, and you have to uh, resolve it and add. So one will be in one direction, the other one will be in the opposite direction, and then you will get the expression for delta r. Delta is equal to r theta y cos alpha minus theta x sin alpha. And you can substitute for theta y and theta x. Theta is actually uh, the angle of twist due to the torque T, Tn by Gj. And theta x is actually the uh, slope due to the bending moment, so which is ml by Ti. Okay? And T is nothing but m sin alpha, and bending moment is m cos alpha in this case. And you can uh, uh, simplify this. Uh, you can see that m uh, is common, m sin alpha, cos alpha, and l is common. So that uh, all these are taken outside. So m r l sin alpha cos alpha can be taken outside and what will be remaining will be gj and ei so 1 by gj minus 1 by ei so this is the expression for delta so delta is equal to m r l sin alpha cos alpha 1 by gj minus 1 by ei so this is the fundamental uh, expression so once you get the expression for the uh, phi and delta everything else can be obtained by using the general equations that you know so with that, uh, the derivations are over. Okay. So any questions? Yeah. So I have done with the uh, derivations, all the derivations. Now uh, I'll be doing some problems extra problems uh, based on these theories some of them uh, which has been asked in the university exams some of them just to demonstrate uh, uh, how to get the quantities uh, from the given data etc so any questions anything if you haven't understood i'll explain once again or else we will do the problems any questions? Any derivations to be repeated? Okay. Okay. So, uh, if you have the calculator, I think I'll give some. I'll actually I'll give some worksheet also. Uh, maybe after uh, the course, where with which we can uh, work with, and some of the problems will maybe we will do now. If you are uh, ready with the calculator, can I do some of some problems so that you can? Uh, do with me. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, so those are the problems they can uh, take out the calculator. Maybe we will start from some simple problems and then we will go to different types of problems uh, which will come for you. So I'll just write a problem here. Let's start with a simple one so that you can feel free. A close coil spring is to carry an axial load. of one kilo newton. Its mean coil diameter is to be ten times that of wire diameter. Calculate the diameter Calculate the diameter of the coil or find the diameter of the coil if the maximum shear stress in the material the spring is 90 Newton per millimeter square. So this is a very simple problem where you can try out if you have the calculator. So it's a closed coil spring to carry an axial load of 1 kilo Newton. Uh, its mean coil diameter is 10 times that of wire diameter. Calculate the diameter of the coil or find the diameter of the coil if the maximum shear stress in the material of the spring is 90 Newton per millimeter square. So first of all, let us write the data first. What is given is uh, W, W which is equal to 1 kilo Newton, which is equal to 1000 Newton. And then what is given is mean coil diameter is uh, 10 times that of the wire diameter. So capital D is equal to 10 times small d. And capital D is nothing but 2 times R. So R is equal to 5D. Then calculate the diameter of the, so you are asked to find what is small d. So what is given is actually uh, tau, shear stress, tau max is given to you. The maximum shear stress is actually 90 Newton per millimeter square. And we know uh, the equation for a closed coil spring, tau is equal to 16 W. 16WR by pi pi d cube. 16WR by pi d cube. And uh, you can put it, this is equal to 16WR is actually 5D here because it is already given to you 5D cube. 
So you can remove this D and this will become square. So you will get D square is equal to, so D square is equal to 16W into 5 by pi into tau max, where tau max is given as 90. Okay. So you can find out D square. So D square, you will get it as 282. You can do it along with me. D square is equal to 282.94. And so solving this, you will get D is equal to 16.82. M. So this is a, a very simple one, which I had done. So that you will understand it. Now let us do another problem, uh, maybe a spring in series, which I haven't demonstrated. Okay. So let us uh, do one other problem, another problem where the springs are uh, say in series. So just take down the problem. A composite spring. Two close coiled springs connected in series. One spring has Twelve coils of a mean diameter of twenty five mm and wire diameter. of 2.5 mm. Find the wire diameter of the other spring if it has so it is uh, 15 coils of mean diameter for TMO. The stiffness of the spring The stiffness of the composite spring is 1.5 kN per meter. Also determine the greatest load that can be carried
by the composite spring. and the corresponding extension if maximum stress is Two fifty. I mean, stress is actually uh, the shear stress. Okay, maximum shear stress is two fifty mega newton per meter square. G is equal to eighty giga newton per meter square. Okay. So uh, just read out the question, understand the question, and find out what you have to do. Now, uh, some of them has gone crossed, actually, uh, that was some problem with the pen. So I'll just read out the question. A composite spring has two close-coiled uh, springs connected in series. And one spring has 12 coils of a mean diameter of 25 mm and wire di diameter of 2.5 mm. Find the wire diameter of the other spring if it has 15 coils of mean diameter, uh, 15 coils of mean diameter 40 mm. The stiffness of the composite spring is 1.5 kN per meter. Also determine the greatest load that can be carried by the composite spring and the corresponding extension if maximum stress is uh, 250. It's not 25, it is 250 mega per meter square and G is equal to uh, sorry, 80. 80, 80 newton per meter square. Okay, so this is a problem. Uh, so read it and understand what are you asked to find and what are the data that is given. So here it is given that springs are in uh, series. So if the springs are in series, uh, what is the condition? We have already learned that if they are in series, uh, their deflection, deflection uh, will be uh, equal to the total deflection will be equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 so that is a fundamental that you should know and 1 by k equivalent is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 uh, and uh, k equivalent is already given to you uh, that is equivalent uh, stiffness which is given the stiffness of the composite spring 1.5 kN per meter that is already given to you and what else is given to you uh, for each spring uh, what is the data? N1, the number of coils, N1 is uh, 12. The mean diameter, D1, is 25. So R1 will be 12.5 mm. Then the wire diameter, small D1, is equal to 2.5 mm. Uh, so these are the details of the maybe first spring. Now let us consider this as a second spring. For the second spring, again, uh, what is given is uh, 15 coils, so N2 is equal to 15. You can put N2 is equal to 15. The mean diameter D2 is 40 mm, so R2 will be 20 mm. Uh, you are not given the diameter of the coil D2, so that is what you are asked to find. So you are asked to find the uh, find the wire diameter of the other spring. So you are asked to find D2. So uh, you can find D2 from the fundamental equation that is 1 by k equivalent is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2. And uh, what is k1? How will you find k1 or k? What is the expression for k? k is equal to w by delta. So that I will just write here. So you, are, you can find uh, this uh, delta uh, D by using this expression. That is, hope you have copied the question. So uh, the fundamental equation here is 1 by k equivalent 
because it is in series sorry 1 by k equivalent is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 this is what you are supposed to do and uh, k equivalent is given to you now what is k1 and k2 So I start from here. So what is the expression for K? So K is actually the stiffness. You should understand what is K. K we have already uh, learned it is W by delta. Uh, and we have already got the expression for K, which is equal to G D to the power 4 divided by 64 uh, N R K. So uh, you have to substitute uh, uh, for K1 will be G D1 to the power 4, 64, N1, R1, Q. And similarly, K2. So you will get 1 by K equivalent is equal to 1 by uh, K1, where K1 will be uh, 1 by K1 plus 1 by K2, where 1 by K1. K1 will be G D1 to the power 4, into 64 N1 R1 Q plus uh, 1 by K2, where K2 is G D to the power 4 by 64 N2 R2 Q. So, R2 Q. Okay, this is how you have to find. So, K equivalent is given to you. Uh, you can substitute for K equivalent. N1 R1 and D1 is given. G is also given. Uh, N2, R2, this is R2, R2 and G, um, I mean, uh, N2 and R2 is given. So the only unknown quantity here is D2. So solving this, you will be able to get D2 here. So D2, the answer I will give you, you can, sorry, D2 is equal to 4.762 mm. So this was the first part of the question. You were asked to find the diameter of the other wire. Okay, now uh, what is left, what is the remaining part? You are asked to find, uh, uh, I mean, the maximum load, right? The greatest load that it can be carried uh, by the spring. And uh, the maximum stress that it can take is also given to you. Okay, so how will you find the maximum load that it can carry? For that, you have to use this formula. Tau max is given to you. So you can use tau max is equal to 16. W R by pi d q, and now uh, you have two uh, springs, uh, so you will be having two R's. So which one you have to take? So that is a confusion. So which one should be taking? So the greatest load can that can be carried corresponds to which spring? That spring which will be having the uh, smaller diameter. So you have to use. Uh, R1 and D1, I mean uh, D1 is the first spring has a diameter of 2.5 mm and D2 we have already found and that we got it as 4.762 mm. So uh, the uh, this spring, the spring with the lesser diameter will be uh, dominating or will be uh, the one which will be deciding the maximum W. So tau max is already given to you, which is 250. So you can substitute for tau max and 16 W R, you have to put R, R1 because uh, this is smaller, 2.5 mm and D here D1. So the only unknown will be W, you can solve for W. So that will be the maximum load that can be carried by the spring. So W max is equal to, uh, it will be tau max, it is uh, 250 into, uh, uh, what is it, pi into d1, d1 is 2.5 q by r1, r1 is 12.5. So you will get uh, w max as, so I'll give you the answer, which is equal to 61.35 newton. So this is the maximum w. Now, if you are asked to find, the last portion is actually uh, extension. You are asked to find the total extension. So the total extension is uh, given as delta max is equal to W max by, by K equivalent. The equivalent K 
okay so using this formula you can find the maximum or the total deflection also the maximum load we have already found 61.35 newton and the equivalent k is already given in the question so you will get delta max which is equal to 40.9 okay. so this is a problem uh, related to the springs which are in series so similarly uh, you can get problems when the springs are in parallel and you will be asked to find say some of the quantities like this okay now we we'll do another problem Uh, maybe we will do a problem on, uh, say, a buffer spring. So just take down a problem on buffer spring. A wagon weighing. Twenty five kilo newton is moving at three kilometer per hour how many springs each of 24 coils will be required in a buffer stop to absorb the energy energy of motion during a compression of 200 m uh, the mean diameter of the coils is to 40 mm and the diameter of the steel road comprising the coil is 20 mm Kg is equal to 0.9 into 10 to the power 5 newton per millimeter square. Okay, so this is a problem on buffer spring. A wagon uh, weighing 25 kilonewton is moving at uh, 3 kilometer per hour. Uh, how many springs each of 24 coils will be required? in a buffer stop to absorb the energy of motion during a compression of 200 mm the mean diameter of the coil is 240 mm and the diameter of the wire is 20 mm and the g is given to you so here you are asked to find the number of springs so here again if you want to find the number of springs you have to find the w equivalent and using the data uh, and also uh, uh, what is that uh, the energy stored, the kinetic energy, by equating the kinetic energy absorbed by the energy stored by uh, the spring, 
you can find how many springs are required. So what you have to do is first of all, you have to find the W equivalent uh, axial load when the load is uh, gradually applied. So first of all, you find out the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, we know it is half mv square and that you have to equate it to, uh, uh, what is it? This uh, W, uh, the work done. And that is equal to half into W equivalent into delta. Actually, this is the uh, energy stored by one of the springs and uh, um, into N. So suppose if you use N number of springs, uh, into N will be equal to the kinetic energy stored. Okay. And uh, here M is given to you mass. Uh, it's not, mass is not directly given. Uh, you are given the weight of the wagon. So you have to divide it by G. Uh, 25 kilonewton by G, you will get the uh, M. And then uh, the velocity is given 3 kilometer per hour. So you may have to convert it into meter per second. So how to convert into 5 by 18, convert it into meter per second. And then you can find out the kinetic energy. Uh, and then how to find W equivalent? W equivalent is not directly given to you. But you are given the delta. Delta, the deflection is... Uh, uh, given as uh, 240 mm. I mean, sorry, uh, delta is uh, yeah 200 mm. Yeah. During a compression of 200 mm, so delta is given to you. So how to find W equivalent? W equivalent you have to get from another data. Okay. So you are given uh, delta. So from the delta you may have to find the the W equivalent. So delta is equal to you know 60. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So uh, delta is equal to so something that. So you will get delta is equal to uh, 64 WRQ L by GD to the power 4. So here delta is already given to you and from here you have to find uh, uh, W and N is actually this uh, this delta is uh, maybe for the for one of the springs. So uh, you uh, I mean, for W equivalent per spring, you will get using this. So W equivalent is equal to uh, maybe G D to the power 4 delta by 64 R cube N. So you can just uh, rewrite this and uh, you will get W uh, equivalent for uh, per spring. So if N is equal to 1, you will get the W equivalent for one spring. And then you can solve for W equivalent from here. And uh, delta is already given. Delta is uh, given to you in the problem, uh, which is equal to 200 M. Right, is given so uh, to absorb the energy of motion during a compression of 200 mm. So delta is given to you. So you can solve for this and find out the W equivalent for particular one particular spring. So the energy uh, W that can be taken by one spring, and then you substitute here, uh, and then uh, you will and you can substitute for delta, and you can get the number of springs. Okay, so this is how you get the number of springs required for a wagon. Now there are many other problems. Now suppose if you are given uh, a problem where uh, uh, weight is dropped uh, from a height and you are asked to find uh, what is the height of the drop. Again, there is a, another kind of problem. Again, you have to use the fundamental formulas, but uh, what you have to do is in such kind of problem, you have to equate the work done to the uh, potential energy. So here, there, what you have to do is, 
not this problem there you got so it's a different problem okay so there you, what you have to do is the work done will be again you have to find w equivalent wherever you have impact load you cannot use a weight by which it is the spring is uh, impacted by some weight that you should not be taking you have to find the equivalent load by equating the energy and that equivalent load half w equivalent will be equal to uh, this is what p into h plus delta p or the w that is coming on or falling on the spring into uh, suppose if it is falling from a height h and if delta is the compression of the spring then the potential energy is h plus delta the total uh, height you have to take and then you have to find the w equivalent and then maybe you may be asked to find uh, the height by i mean what is the uh, height of the drop etc so there are different types of problems so i have dif uh, discussed uh, many types of problems as possible so uh, i'll give some more problems as a worksheet with the solution maybe you can uh, solve it yourself at home and check whether you are getting the answer that also i will have, give out as a handout uh, i think with that i will stop here um, yes. so with that i'm winding up thank you for listening Thank you so much, ma'am. Actually, Ruby, ma'am, is having some meeting. Actually, okay. uh, that's okay. why she couldn't join. So, thank you so much for your informative uh -huh. session. Okay. Thank you. And uh, participants, if you have any doubts, you can ask. Uh, Okay, ma'am, I don't think uh, they have any yeah. doubts. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time and the uh, Okay. I'll convey, I'll convey to uh, Ruby, ma'am. Uh, okay. Okay, then shall I leave? Ah, yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.